Hi, Jean. All right, I'm going to do your past life wisdom and healing service. And we don't have any goals for the work specifically, so I'm just going to relax and we'll see what spirit has to share, okay? I'm just connecting with your spiritual atmosphere. I feel like I... There's quite an energy shift going on, so it's a little hard to talk through just yet. It's relaxing me quite a lot. Keep hearing just clashing swords, but I'm not able to necessarily see anything just yet. So the scene was, I'm just sort of like eyes blinking and big round glasses and I'm sort of an onlooker like a child watching a television screen and on TV it's like I'm hearing swords clashing like there's a you know old school medieval war or something like that and so I'm just waiting for the scene to reveal itself more and then there's just a very relaxed sensation so I'm able to kind of to check this out a little bit more clearly I'm so, in this scene, what would be like a little kid looking up at a big television watching this? I'm actually, that, so I'm coming in from the side. So I see a television from the side and it's cut like this. It has both the reflection of, there's two different sides of a mirror. It also has an odd reflection of being a very thin doorway. So I'm going to examine this some more. It's going a doorway going into the brain, into the mind. I am opening it up like I'm opening up the television to go inside it. And there's a hand with the remote instantly turning the television off, not wanting to see. There is kind of an anger or aggressive energy. I just see a head full of wiring. I feel I, there's a, an angry man that is taking, it's like a, he's got a folded chair and he's wanting to use it to break something. There's just a lot of angry energy and wires not connected. There's also a face, so I see the scene. I also see the scene with the man. I also see what is a television pulled apart with all kinds of weird wirings that are all just disconnected. And I also see all of this stuff taking place on the side of somebody's head and inside their brain, like that. <clears throat> There's no hair. It's a, a bald female. She is just typing on a computer her thoughts, maybe it's a journal, maybe she's writing a story. She has, she's not necessarily asking, she's, this is not bothering her. She seems to be completely disconnected from whatever this is. Or maybe she is connected to this and writing the story of it. But her demeanor is very pleasant, it's composed, it feels like she has herself together and she knows what she wants to say, what she's wanting to type. If I had that going on in my head, I'd be like, I'd probably have a twitching eye and, uh, you know, there'd probably be a little bit of freaky going on with my facial <laughs> expressions. <laughs> but she is not acknowledging that anything going on like that. She is standing up and the chair is moving out. I hear the sound of a chair being pulled back again and it's sort of the sound it makes against the floor. She's she's a bald woman. I mean it's like cancer. Where her she has no hair growing, no ability to grow hair at all. It's not like she shaves her head. There's just zero hair. It's all dead. She's putting coffee in the microwave, warming it up. She has a robe, but she also has pajamas, pants, and something underneath it, too. She's walking back. She's got slippers. She's got coffee. She's going to sit back down and do some more typing. She's like, I, too, have a little warm drink. Ah, that's what she's like. Has her, this, that perfect sensation. 
it just hits the spot, you know? I'm ready to keep typing. I'm going into what is a very thin slit inside her third eye region. She is thinking about knights in shining armor. There's something of a romance flair as well. There's something of a heroine. He's male. Some sort of really angry vein again. I mean, it just wants to keep destroying everything. It comes with a, it's like, ah, scream sound. And it, and it comes like a really disturbed root that comes through the scene. And then also invisible hands that are wanting to rip the scene apart. It's like, turtle has worm to eat, turtle, ah, rip. <laughs> this is sort of a, a angry, creepy, just rip, destroy, violate what could be a really, you know, a great story. It's like every woman's favorite story. <laughs> I'm the princess, he's a handsome knight, saves the day, you know, whatever it might be. I'm inspired, I want this energy consciousness, this part of you to enter into the scene. It's, it's important. He's kind of a barbarian, is what he, he's very hairy man. Hairy back, uh, very hairy chest, very hairy face, very, uh, very hairy. <laughs> He's got a really heavy sort of, I mean, he looks like a caveman, but he doesn't. He actually just looks, I probably see this guy wearing some motorcycle leathers and have a Harley Davidson or something, you know? But he just happens to be dressed as some sort of orangish brown colored piece that he has on. And then, I don't know, is it just, I don't know how, it, it's short. Whatever it is, is it's shorter. I can see his legs. He's quite, he's quite husky, but also extremely strong as well. But he's also got a club, you know, like a weapon or something. But he likes to hold things and smash. It's like Hulk smash is kind of his demeanor. He just likes to destroy. He's looking, he's eyeballing, you know, for something that he can just tear up and beat up. But as he's in the computer now, she's still typing away like humdy dumdy dum no nothing going on here. Average day. <laughs> I'm seeing the little person watching the television again, and the television is ripped in half. And it's sort of sparking on, um, in there, but the kid is still wearing... It's a little boy. He's got really massive glasses. It's almost cartoonish. It's just really massive glasses that are really ridiculously thick, too. And he's just... As he blinks, you can kind of... It's like his entire eyeballs are, like, magnified and blinking at the screen. And he's sitting really close to a television. This, this, it, the TV is on and the pictures are going, although this is broken and there's zip zappiness and sparks. Like it should not be working, but yet it somehow is. I'm looking at the mind again. There's something black inside it. And now as I type, I am typing while I look at a black Head, a brain with black. I mean, it's a black brain. I am studying, analyzing. There's a scientificness about it. The, the head structure, the brain structure. There's lines, there's graphs, there's equations. It's turning slightly. We are examining human brain, skull versus um, ape, or we're doing scientific work here. Human versus sort of different aged humans. Sort of, but ape, it's like an ape version and now a modern. I mean, there's a scientific, there's still, it's an analysis and it's very, very fast. Data, 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 look, 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 find, 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 more, more, more. It's going really quickly.
now we're going back to the female who's just, you know, wonderful day, drink coffee, no, nothing's going on. <clears throat> As this is happening, there's sort of like, I'm spinning and there, I'm like a waitress who has way too many plates in her hands and then on her shoulder. And they're showing me entering into some sort of really extravagant dining scene and people eating really fancy dinners and dressed very nicely. There's even piano or instrumental playing music, um, fine dishware, really fine crystal um, wine glasses kind of thing. It's really fine, very high class. There is spinning and I just feel like I need to have more arms or hands in order to accomplish all of the things that I'm carrying right now. I mean, it's really accelerating the speed. Faster, faster, faster. More, 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 more. Let's look at, you know, caveman, night scene, grill typing, this, that, 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 da, da, da. It's just like all these scenes just keep wanting to just pop, pop, pop. It's sort of like, you know, you flip the channel. You know, channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, channel six, channel seven, da, 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 and then all the way up to channel 2000. It's sort of like, how many more scenes can we try to carry on more hands than we even have, and then try to fit that in our brain and actually be able to just chill out and make sense of anything? <laughs> like, too many facts, too many thoughts. Rev, 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 fast, fast, fast. It's just, it's going out of control. It's just an, an insanity, you know? You need to just... No wonder the wires are just, like, not sparking and things are just not, it's just overwhelming. So I'm just waiting for a moment. I'm having an interaction with my spirit guides. I feel like I'm in a jumbled mess of wires that are in knots and I don't have a freaking clue how to unknot. It's like Christmas vacation. Here, Russ, here's this like giant <laughs> bald knot <laughs> of 20,000 lights. <laughs> That's kind of what this is like. <laughs> so I'm just. This is serious. Because I really am examining how to unknot the energy patterns that are creating what is, it's like everything is just, it, the pacing isn't right and things are starting to build on top of each other. There are, there's moments of real, you know, I love the sort of relaxation and the coffee but this woman clearly has, she must have a cancer or something because there's a reason they're showing me her like this I can't feel that she's sick but I can see that she has no hair and she looks like somebody who's undergoing chemo and their hair falls out that's what she looks like the scene with the night and everything it was like a really beautiful story right this man with the temper tantrum, he is, he is a problem. He's a menace. And this kid who's trying to watch television and the TV's breaking apart. The, this, the, all these scenes with the brain, too, and the mind. The scientific study, the data, the analysis. It just, and then the scene of just too many plates and too many people to serve and too much going on. It just, my brain is over, it's like, it's overworked it's going to short circuit is constantly this message so i'm standing in a room and you're it's like i'm in your brain and you are piloting the brain you're actually sitting at the captain's chair and you're hooked up to wires that are hooked into the brain itself so they're hooked into your brain piloting the brain <laughs> is what it is and I'm standing here looking at a pile of wires. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at this. I'm trying to make it like. And so I'm trying to figure out what I can do to help this create balance. Nothing about this is ba about balance that I've seen. Balance is you feeling like you're a part of the world. Not your co-piloting inside your brain with wires attached to your brain attached to the brain itself. It just... 
none of it, it you know and you're bald like you have are undergoing chemo or something that nothing of it is healthy he keeps telling me it's not healthy I put love into the scene, love that we can count on, love that, love that isn't about going to war, war in order to save the day and win the princess. It's not, you know, we don't solve the problems by letting our temper get a hold of us and we start breaking everything. Not only are we breaking actual physical items that we own, but we are just destroying our own life. We end up breaking our lives that way too. It's important that you acknowledge your health and not, you know, it is it is a part of you. Something of it is projecting outside into the world that you live in and it, it, it something is not right here. I'm continuing to share love with this sort of ship room. It's like a... It's like being in a spaceship and you're in the pilot's chair. I'm going to you and I'm asking you to please look into my eyes. I want you to see me. I want you to see that somebody is here with you. I look at you and you look robotic. <clears throat> you do not look like you're all there. I explore unplugging you. Um, you're pointing your finger and saying, look at that. I say, I see a dark, I just see we're inside of a brain. It's just dark out there. You're looking at me and saying, look, and you're trembling. I'm starting to feel that you have an anxiety or a fear. I say, okay, so I'm choosing to look and choosing to see. You're, you feel like somebody's looking back at you. And when that happens, you feel like you get pulled back into the pilot's chair. And now you're forced in a position that you have no control over. You're asking me to please unhook you from this. As that happens, all you do is start processing data like a computer. I'm trying to remove the wires. I, it's not happening right now, so I just have to be patient and continue to examine what this is about. <clears throat> hmm. Your heart's racing. There's some odd scene here. I mean, it's almost like your entire body is the size of a heart that's beating. It's really beating profusely. Your entire body is like, ba-bump, ba-bump, ba-bump. That's what it's like. And all the while, like, the bed is even going ba-bump. So you're, like, getting tossed into the air while at the same time you, too, are beating. You're in a very small compartment, so it even feels like, um, what is that feeling of it's enclosed spaces, people that are afraid of enclosed spaces? That's, it's overwhelming. I'm in an enclosed space, I'm beating like a heart, my bed's beating me up and down like a heart, and I'm in an enclosed space, and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, I can't breathe, <gasps> I'm freaking out. It's kind of like that. I just, I'm just smiling at you and t asking you, when you're ready, acknowledge me. When you're ready, allow yourself to relax and come walk towards me. You just keep showing me, you feel like there's too many trap doors. I 
I pull out some four, I don't know what they are, the cables from the back of your head. I'm back in that sort of spaceship thing. I'm saying, you know what, there comes a point in time where you can continue to look at the eyeball looking back at you and be afraid, or you can say, you know what, this is not adding any value to my life. It's only continuing to keep me in an imprisonment of fear. So you have to choose to either A, stay in a state of fear, or B, alter the state by just choosing to be at peace and relax. If somebody's watching you, then so be it, you know? Just let yourself find peace. And you're coming with me. You're holding my hand and we're choosing to walk out of this sort of brain. And then we're walking down long stairway. It's like a castle. It's like a head is inside of a castle. The head is sort of the it's the head of the castle. So uh, there's a head there's something about seeing or head of the table or there's something of that kind here. There's some play on words going on here. There literally is a head with eyes at the top of the castle. We're walking down the stairs and we're walking away from the castle. The castle, the stairway tries to develop a arm or a hand to grab you by the leg and pull you back. They say no. This experience is done and over with. I mean, it's quite, whatever this is, was was not a very warm and cozy event. <laughs> As we walk further and further away from there, I mean, it's, I don't know what to make, I don't know how to create clarity of the scenes but um you're inside of a castle and things are are being are very disturbing for you in there and now you are not in the castle anymore and we are walking away from it you're wanting to leave a lot behind you tell me you're showing me even the clothing on your back you're removing a long cable of it's just a pink um, electrical type of energy coming out the back of you where the heart portal is so here's the heart portal on the back side it's just coming out of you naturally you're letting it go it actually looks like a flag of some kind it's got streamers it all it has kind of a kite effect to it too but it's pink in color you just, you're just the more delighted. The further and further we walk away from them, the more delighted you are. You're just, oh, more things I can leave behind. You're just ready to just let go as, as much as you can. I mean, you are too. You are letting go of a lot. I mean, there's some sort of massive heap of treasure that, that you let go of. <laughs> Has to do with money. Um... You don't want, you say, I, I don't, I don't want, I mean, you're telling me you are ready to let go of everything. Not only, it, and it has a lot to do with the ego too, letting go of what could be greed, you know, letting go of, I don't know how to analyze them all, but I'm just going to keep watching you, okay? One of them has to do with letting go of clothing, which has to do with letting go of some essence of of beauty that is superficial. <clears throat> You're feeling more and more delighted. You just feel so happy. You say one thing I've always loved doing was it, there's you're playing some sort of string instrument. It it's kind of like a guitar, but it's not a guitar. Um it's got more of a medieval type of look to it. You're male, you're singing songs that you wrote yourself and playing it on this instrument. And it's kind of a folk singer type thing. You really love sharing stories from your heart, you say. There's one thing I always loved and it was really sharing stories of meaning from my heart and touching people's lives with them. 
seeing people's faces and I create it myself and and give them those feelings within their own heart and then sharing it through music and sound real meaning is what you're saying real meaning you it brings real joy to you and you say I I find joy in being male or female what I enjoy most is have the creativity of sharing stories that impact people's lives. But you're showing me that sometimes you have a weird hair. I mean, this folk singer who is so happy, he suddenly stands up, all the people vanish, and he's starting to break everything. There's some version of you that's got a brute sort of ang temper tantrum issue. He's quite violent. They're asking me, is saying it's okay to let go, and I'm actually helping, I'm asking him to give me the weapon. <laughs> okay, give me the weapon. <laughs> give me your giant club. <laughs> he is, too. He's smiling at me. He shows me there's something else about him that nobody knew. He, it's on the level of he had a very different type of sexual um, side. And he, it would be like he likes to dress up like a woman kind of thing. Because he shows me his heart is far more feminine than his appearance is very masculine, brutish. Um, he can't be himself. And because of that, he's, he has temper tantrums. He just wants to be himself. And I'm saying, well, then why? I will just let you be yourself then. He starts to cry. <laughs> I mean, he's really ups he's really crying and releasing motion. He's been really tired of having to be somebody he's not. He keeps saying he's a hairy man. He's got a lot of hair, he, but he cannot help it. He has something about him where he just likes to wear silky garments and lipstick. I mean, that's it's on that level. He keeps showing me he has this joy of his feminine side. He really loves and embraces the feminine side of him, but he can't be feminine. He has to be masculine, and so he's far more masculine than is really honest. And then it creates a lot of anger in him. He says that this confusion has been really hard because he, he is quite certain that he's meant to be a woman in this life, but he is a man. He even draws me a picture of how he feels he's supposed to have breasts and a vagina. And he doesn't have any of those things. He feels, he, he feels very lost about this because he doesn't know how to feel comfortable in his own skin as a man. He's quite certain he was meant to be a woman. He keeps saying this. And that, that heaven played a really rotten trick on him to do this to him. You say there's a lot of people, you're not the only one who feels this way. And the world is becoming more open-minded to diversity. And manifesting another who feels the same way as him so that he can Find somebody he can be himself around, that can know his true heart, that can understand him. It, there, is, there is an embrace of their bodies and a joy that is experienced from his heart, which is quite feminine. And from this release is just a massive, it's a weird squishy energy. I don't know. It's, it's just, it's like a squishy ball with funny little arms out of the heart portal. It's orange in color. Sometimes it wants to come back in and clog the drain, <laughs> but I say no, you, you, you gotta let it go. It creates a massive balance for you of acceptance and knowing you're worthy and deserving of love and that you're beautiful. I put a mirror in front of this man and I say you're beautiful however you choose to express yourself
He's smiling. He's glad I took that club away. He's, there's something imbalanced because this, the sexual... He hasn't been able to be himself sexually. And that has been very hard on him. Because he's been... Because society wants him to behave in a way that is appropriate, but it is violating to him because it's not appropriate for him. It's not, it, it's, it ends up being a, a sexual violation to his identity because the only way he can fit in is to not be himself. And it's on a sexual level as well, as in a, a level of appearance, because he doesn't feel like a man, he feels like a woman. This is a really big deal. And there I'm helping him to accept that he's he's a man, but he can he feels like a woman and that's part of the fun of incarnating. <laughs> life <laughs> life likes to th throw curveballs sometimes and just delight in the experience of the curveball because it can be fun it can be fun I know it's not exactly fun when you don't feel accepted and um, you're different and people don't accept you for that but but the spirit on the spiritual angle there's some delight that the higher self um, has and having these types of um, unusual experiences where everything is sort of turned upside down like that So it's just a patient and I mean he feels quite he feels really happy that we're I mean he's feeling happier and happier to know that it's okay to just be himself. There's something disturbing now in this scene with the <clears throat> the night. It feels disturbing now. It doesn't feel like a happy story. It feels like a gruesome, disgusting story. It feels like the handsome knight, um, the hero, it didn't work out so well for him in the end. It's, it wasn't like he got to, to save the princess or get to... I, I mean, it doesn't feel good at all inside. They aren't showing me what, what this is about, but they're helping me to feel the meaning of an image of a knight on a horse who looks quite successful because he's, aha, yeah, but it isn't. The feeling is very bad, very negative. We got to look at the pages of the book, they say. We got to start looking at things clearly. With the big glasses. You gotta look at the pictures clearly. You gotta take the time to see. Don't keep flipping through the channels. Actually take the time to see what it is. It's important. Otherwise, it's gonna start feeling like you're trying to juggle too many plates and you don't have enough arms. And there's a lot too many emotions that just feel like they get smushed together. It's okay to take one day at a time. There's an odd time experience going on here. Almost, almost like you're going too slow in a really fast world or you're going too fast in a really slow world. I can't understand it, but it's a, it's a smush. It creates a smush experience. And a cluttering of too many, too much to balance at one time. I'm having this woman just be herself. I'm, I'm having a conversation with her. I'm asking her, is she sick? Is she okay? Maybe she was born without hair or... She's really angry at me for even daring to... I mean, how dare you? think that you have the right to ask me questions about why I don't have hair. I mean, it's like I, like very, um, like I violated you, but I mean, I'm actually a kind, caring person. I wasn't trying to hurt your feelings. I'm just trying to help, I say. You have s two emotions, one anger, one feeling like you just want to cry. 
and nobody understands you. And because nobody understands, then you choose to push people away and be in your own world to try to heal or solve your own problems. You show me the, uh, a very te temper uh, mental behavior. You, you write in a journal and there's just a real um, riffle or raffle of <laughs> energy, you know, where you just want to take a lot of pages and just rip them out, take the book, rip it, and throw it down and step on it. And it, again, it has to do with taking some experience from here, putting it into a physical object, and then destroying the physical object in order to create somehow healing here. You're screaming, it feels like you cannot get a handle on it. You're releasing a lot of energy in the process, but it's not the type of energy that helps to heal you of this or lift it from you. It's the type of energy that ke that keeps that keeps um, putting pouring the salt on the wound, you know? And, and it hurts. It just keeps hurting. And it keeps hurting, and anger never solved anything. It just keeps breaking everything. Anger just breaks things over and over again. It breaks relationships, it breaks your belongings, it breaks everything. After that, I, I am back with you. You're, you're acting like nothing ever happened. You sh it was all in your head. You were just having a real anger fit inside, but you were not showing it on the outside. You're just holding all this anger inside and maintaining extraordinary composure without letting anybody see how mad you truly are on the inside. And you're having a nice cup of coffee or tea or whatever, and we're having a pleasant conversation, And but the reality is you're angry. There is a huge energy ball that's coming out now. I'm going to have to bring this to a close, okay? They're just showing me a roller coaster scene and the energy ball that came out was sort of in this lower gut region. It just sort of came out like that. They show me a roller coaster going down and then going up and then going down and then going up like that. There's the inspiration to look at yourself in the mirror. Um, we explore fixing what was damaged with the, with the television and the wiring. The boy that never moves from a spot, he just, ah, uh, massive glasses and then just in the zone of watching television. You can't break, you know, we can't fix what isn't broken, but it's something um, opposing on this side. You can't fix what is you know, meant to be broken. I mean, there's something weird about how it's looking. I keep trying to fix the TV or put the TV together, put the wiring, but there's something of your, of you that just feels like it's an unfixable break. I'm just sitting with you on the couch in order to close out of this. I'm just trying to tie it up somehow, so... I'm just looking into your eyes and I say, I, that I see into you, I saw, just say that I saw, I saw, I saw you, I see you. I'm just patient and I give you a hug and I let you decide what it means to you. So, that's all that I can share for this. So, it's very interesting. A lot of different scenes of meaning. There's some really positive ones, though. Getting out of that castle was a really big deal. And healing that male reflection that felt female in a male's bite, that was a huge deal. 
allowing that part of you, you know, there's something about that version of you that is sort of sick, but really tries to put the best face forward, but on the inside is screaming, right? That's really, there's a party that really needs some deep down nurturing, and I'm not able to do more than just this. I can only tell you what spirit tells me within the time frame, so the best that I can do. But definitely, you know, keep me posted on what you think, and, um... The energy, you're going to notice some positive shifts, so it, it just allow a couple days to pass and start. you'll start to notice some different feelings about the way you perceive the world around you. It's going to be good. And for those of you watching, if you're interested in past life wisdom and healing service, please visit my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you for watching.